Today we're going over my watch list for the week using the supply and demand methodology. We're going to rapid fire through a lot of pairs because a lot are on my watch list right now. So we are going to do that. Look at the currencies, look at the stocks, and a couple of the commodities because I think the commodities have been getting whacked over the last week. And I think it's a good buying opportunity in my opinion. So we're going to go through those as well. First off, we do have to start with the news because it is important to understand the news coming out for the week. Here it is. Nothing too crazy, but we have a lot of meetings and Fed chairmen's ECB members coming out and speaking. So a lot of the market will be waiting to hear what they have to say. Keep in mind, the following week, July 4th, the markets will be closed. Not this Monday, but the next Monday, July 4th, holiday for the Americans. So the stock market will be closed during that time. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let's start with pound USD. This was on my watch list from last week. It is still on my watch list. It didn't do anything too crazy. It just went sideways last week. This is still the area of supply that I'm watching. I love buying the dollar right now as much as I hate the dollar. Hey, it's where the money is going into, so I'm going to play that. So I definitely like selling the pound, which you would be buying the dollar. Last week, we talked about the dollar. Here, we pop over to the US dollar chart. This was the demand zone that we had on our watch list. This is still going to be on my watch list for the week. If prices can continue to drop into the demand, I will look for buying opportunities on the dollar. This is the same for New Zealand, USD CAD, Aussie USD, any of the majors regarding the US dollar, I am going to be looking for buying opportunities for the dollar if prices can fall back into that demand zone. Okay, I think one of the main pairs that were on my watch list from last week, which still is on this week, is USD Mexican. I like this as a buy trade. Really simple, drop base rally demand zone, but really focus in on the leg out. This is my number one tip that I can give any traders trading supply and demand. We are imbalanced traders. We are looking for serious imbalances between buyers and sellers. Okay, how are we going to see that on a chart? Well, we are going to see very large candlesticks be printed on a chart. So clearly, a lot of buyers came in from down here. Look at all these big black candlesticks, two very, very strong black candlesticks to the upside. We have a drop base rally demand zone down here, and this is where the buyers took control. So this is where you're getting the best value. Now, if you don't like entering swing positions, then, hey, I like this area to be used as a higher time frame and then go down to a 15 minute, to a five minute, to a 30 minute, to a one hour and see if you can be looking for buying opportunities waiting for confirmation. So there's a setup for the swing traders and there's a setup for the short term traders. OK. So once again, trying to buy that dollar, I'm still very bullish this dollar until everything collapses, then, you know, I'm avoiding the dollar. <laughs> so let's continue on to the Dow Jones. What do I see happening this week? I think last week we said I'm feeling a bullish day, but I will continue looking for selling opportunities. So I definitely do like this daily supply zone. Now, just looking at kind of technical approach, what I do notice is... These imbalances to the downside are nine and a half, call it 10%. Correction up to 8%, down 10%. Correction is nine and a half percent. Imbalance is 13%. Pullback is 8%. Imbalance is 10%. So, you know, we're making lower lows, lower highs. I'm just measuring the lower lows and lower highs and measuring the corrective moves to see where the buyers and sellers might start to come in. So now where price is based off of previous correction moves, we're kind of averaging that eight to 9% range, right? So I'm suspecting price to maybe come up into this general area and I will be looking for buying or sorry, selling opportunities. It could drop from there. Totally could. Right. But I definitely like looking for selling opportunities on the Dow Jones if prices can get up into that oval. And even if it pushes up a little bit higher, I love it even more because it's sitting inside a very nice daily pivot point area of supply that made a huge lower low. Okay, I love that area. I love this whole area for looking for selling opportunities. Okay, till then, I'll keep an eye on for buying and selling opportunities, but prefer selling because my win loss for the whole year regarding the stock market has been a lot better when I'm selling this thing as you know, it's clearly been going down. So I'm trying to focus in on shorts as for what's on the watch list regarding UK. 
I'm going to keep an eye on this area. I definitely do like this four hour zone for selling opportunities here. You have four hour supplies here, but notice what I'm trying to do guys. I'm notice I'm drawing out very strong imbalances. Look at the very strong selling coming in. Look at the very strong selling coming in. Look at the very strong selling coming in. So I definitely like those areas for selling opportunities and I'll use them as a higher time frame, and then I'll try to go down to a lower time frame and look for selling. Okay? Kind of the same plan as the Dow Jones that we talked about. Oil, not really on my watch list. Last week we talked about it, how it's not really on my watch list. Still not on the, my watch list. Maybe as a, a scalp, but I'm still not too much of a fan of it. But these are nice little four-hour zones. Okay, look at these zones. Very, very strong imbalances to the downside. So I definitely do like using these areas for selling opportunities on lower time frames. All right, so using multiple time frame is definitely a big key here. Okay, so I definitely do like those UK or US oil short four hour zones. Okay, Bitcoin, we talked about this last week, if you guys recall, uh, we were talking about this weekly rally base rally demand zone once again. Very, very strong imbalance to the upside. It's never broken the 200 moving average. Actually, this might be the first time it breaks the 200 moving average, funny enough. Uh, because we have a whole open high-low close candle, which it probably will break the 200 moving average. Last week we said, hey, I really like it for a buy for a bullish week this coming week, which is already just coming to a close. It is Sunday, so the last day is Sunday. I like it for a bullish week, but I'm thinking it's just going to make a little bit of a move. And so, hey, it did that. You know, buyers managed to step in. I mean, this thing was just getting whacked all the time. It was completely oversold, in my opinion. It was breaking through bottom of the Bollinger Bands a lot. RSI was just screaming oversold. It was sitting inside demand. It was breaking the 200 moving average. I don't know. To me, it was just screaming it needs to have a pullback week, right? What's my projection on this next week? I don't really care. You know, it's... It's made its move, not necessarily made its move. I still like this area for selling opportunities up in here on Bitcoin. Why? I think it's an old support and resistance line. So we're going to use it as resistance. We're going to be trading with the downward trend. We're also reacting inside of a weekly supply zone. Also would have broken the 200 moving average. So I think this supply zone's got a lot of strength to it if prices come back up into this area, okay? So I think you got a good story of why you should be looking for sells up in here. You, know, it, it, you can make some money on the way down. There's nothing wrong with that, guys. You don't just have to be a holder, right? Buy and hold, you don't have to be just that guy. You can buy and sell. Aussie, New Zealand, we talked about this last week. Definitely, if we take a higher time frame approach to this, I love the monthly time frame. Huge area of supply coming in up in this general range. And for the bottom of the range, down in here, I definitely still like it. Looking for selling opportunities. If you guys recall, this was the whole watch list. But we are still holding that uptrend. We might have broken this momentum, which is the first indication of price starting to turn. In order for price to turn, you do understand, price has to turn from inside out. The first indication is going to be trend lines being broken and opposing zones being removed. We are starting to break trend. Okay, this is one of the indications, breaking upward momentum. We might have removed some type of demand, but really this is the demand right here that I need to see being removed to say this thing has a higher chance, a lot higher chance to finally start going down and make lower lows, lower highs. Okay, so what if, if you recall from last week, we talked about I really like this area for buying opportunities on a one hour, 30 minute, 15 minute. I still like it. I still do. I think it's totally fine for day trades and that type of stuff. Now for swing trades, I think, you know, you're getting high on that curve we talked about on the monthly where previously the last 10, 15 times. I mean, it's just held every single time. So it makes sense to be looking for selling opportunities. But we need to wait for confirmation, wait for evidence of sellers to come into the market. Breaking trend, removing opposing zones, which will look like this, like that, right? And so if prices can drop a little bit more, I will love this area of supply here. And I think we got to take it on a four-hour zone. If we go down to the four-hour, this is the four-hour zone that I really like. So I'll keep an eye on that if prices can continue to drop. Okay, even if prices rally up 
from here. I still like this four hour zone, not necessarily as a swing trade, but as a higher time frame, and then use that as a higher time frame and go down to a five minute, 15 minute type of entry time frame on a lower time frame and look for selling opportunities in there. You know what I mean? Aussie Swiss. This is a interesting one. I like this actually as a potential trade. We just talked about this on Aussie New Zealand, waiting for confirmation, waiting for trend lines to be broken, opposing zones to be removed. This is what I mean, right? I draw it out all the time. Now, there's a certain quality aspect of what we look for and higher time frame, a lot of other stuff. But bare bones, this is a little zone I like. This could be over within 24 hours. But just as an educational purpose, this is what I like. Lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. Very strong move to the upside. Removing opposing supply zones. Breaking trend. So that's telling me a lot of buyers stepped in from down here. This is where the buyers finally started to take control. Now, I still think it's still pretty early to be buying this thing. I mean, everything is 200 moving average is pretty down. Higher time frame is down. But I still think this is a good little zone for a quick trade. And if you are not very happy with it, then I like it as a higher time frame and then going down to a one minute. So there's so many different options. If that's why I talk about the daily, the four hour, and maybe even the one hour a lot of the time, or maybe even the single time frame, because different traders like different time frame sequences based off of their style of trading. And if they want more, okay, then you can add more multiple time frame setups, or you can add the single time frame setup, or you can add a different kind of a setup that we talk about in the group. It really depends on the trader. But what's important is I see it all the time is don't get yourself into information overload because I'll see it all the time with people like I want to do this, 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 this. And they're like, I'm confused. I'm, I'm overwhelmed. It's because you're looking at too many markets and you're trying to trade too many setups. Focus on one time frame sequence, one setup, become a one trick pony. That's what I tell everybody. Your main goal is to become a one trick pony. And then eventually you can branch out and start trading different markets, different setups, adding different things, removing different things to see what works best. Okay, but first you got to become a one trick pony. And if you disagree with that completely, let me know. Let me know why you why you disagree. Let's move on to commodities because we're going to ramp up really quickly. Hey, if you guys are enjoying this so far, I really appreciate it. Hit that like button, subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, let me know down below. What is on your watch list this week do you think bitcoin's going to have a bullish day that's a good one all right a bullish week i should say do you think bitcoin is going up or down for the next week because oof, i don't know about this one i think it's going to have another sideways week and if i had sideways i would say a bullish sideways week that would be my call what do you guys think i think it's going to have a raging day up week up or a raging week down or maybe just sideways let me know and if you guys did want to reach out to me on social media, at Moneyball Austin, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, okay? Reach out to me there, answer any questions that you may have. Let's get into commodities. I really like this this week for buying commodities. Wheat, soybeans, cotton, they all got absolutely smoked last week. Like, horrible week for commodities. So, I like it for buying. <laughs> to have two... Major weeks getting whacked. Do I see it going back down into this era, area of 2022 at the start of the year? It could, but I, I'm very bullish commodities long term. Very bullish. I believe inflation will get worse and all that. Um, food shortages, maybe potentially. So very important. Wheat, soybeans, cotton, sugar, corn, all that type of stuff. Is, uh, in my opinion, it's a buy. It's a buy in my book. So I like this for buying opportunities, but what I'm going to wait for is it's not something I can trade on a five minute or 15 minute is because the spread is too big. I'm going to keep an eye on like the one hour time frame, okay? And I'm waiting for a major structure point to be broken. So right now, these would be like my two trend lines. And what I need to see right now is a very strong move to the upside like that and a drop base rally demand zone being formed. And then I will look to buy it. Right, but right now I haven't seen it, so I'm going to hold off on it because they got good stories and good areas of why we should be buying this thing. Even soybeans, I just it's not really a good demand, but this area of demand has been holding once, twice, three times, four times, and it's, each time it's gone higher and higher than the previous time. 
So I just like this general area for buying for soybeans. I think it's a good area. It's been dropping all week. I think you're getting some good value. Four hours overextended. I would just like to see this thing go a little bit more. So just kind of waiting on the sidelines to see what happens with this thing. Cotton. Last week, I was drawing out this weekly demand. It's been removed. So once again, I'm not going to sell this thing. I'm not a big believer in selling it. So I will keep an eye on for buying opportunities if the buyers can step in. And this is the same for corn, just getting whacked. Regarding corn, I like this supply here. That's a nice zone. Hey, if you guys are liking the way that I'm analyzing the markets using the supply and demand methodology, then you want to head over to moneyballtrading.com and sign up for that training. While well, I will give you access to other trading videos on the supply and demand video covering my tips playlist. Why 90% of the traders lose money. How to become a consistently profitable trader. Should you be a real trading, demo trading, psychology, all that good stuff is covered in that course material. So, hey, I'd love to have you guys part of the team. You can head over to moneyballtrading.com. You can find that in the description below. And you can reach out to me on social media at Moneyball Austin. Really appreciate it if you guys subscribe to this channel. Much love as we travel and trade around the world. Thank you, guys. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.